Hey guys, it's Jessie here. Um, just me this time. It's kind of my own thing that I want to do. About once a month, I really want to do some sort of general bookish, non-wheel of time content. Hoping, my goal, is that at least one book I read a month will be good enough or talk aboutable enough to do like some sort of actual dedicated review. If not, I'll do something else, a book tag, or just a general vlog, or just an update you on what I'm reading, or something like that. We'll see. Uh, but to kick off 2020, I wanted to do something kind of more general, just to give you a little bit more about me, or maybe about my reading taste. So I was thinking a bookshelf tour, which is a little odd for me, and I'll explain that. And a TBR. My original plan was uh, 20 books I want to read in 2020, because that's fun, cool title. But um, I'll explain why that's changing later. So we'll start with the bookshelf tour. And my bookshelves are a little weird. So in the last six years, I have moved every summer. Um, I haven't lived for more than nine months in the same place. It was college originally and then different jobs. So most of my books live at home with my parents. And I limit myself a little bit whenever we're moving so that because books are heavy so that we just don't have everything being moved with us. So I only bring a handful of books that I'm planning to read in the upcoming year with me and I keep them in two milk crates and keep it kind of small. It's grown this year because I found a couple really great independent bookstores and I can't help myself. Also, because the school library occasionally gets rid of books and it's free, and I can't complain when it's free. So, the other thing that kind of makes this a little bit weird is that I keep a small collection of books on a shelf in my classroom so that kids during study hall can borrow them, or if they finish a test or whatever. And So that's kind of books I think they'd like I keep over there. So let's start with those books on my bookshelf tour. So, a few books that are there. We have Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. My goal was to read that in October. I started it in October. It took me until December to finish it. Four stars. It was good. Coraline by Neil Gaiman. Also four stars. Fate of Flame I actually haven't read. That was one I got from like a free book giveaway thing. And it's a young adult first in a series. So, I threw it over there because I actually don't know if I want to read it. I just kind of saw it and was like, eh. And then Amazonia by James Rollins isn't my book. It's one of my co-workers traded me that book for what was originally there, which was A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khaled Hosseini, which was a three-star read for me. So then we go on to my books that I keep in my room. The lower yellow book crate, Milk Crate, has books that I've already read or that I just have more for, I don't want to say decorative purposes, or they also have on that is the sequels. So, Sandman, Preludes and Nocturnes, read it over the summer by Neil Gaiman, three stars. The Campus Stretching Long is actually about my alma mater. I got it for free. I don't know if I'll ever actually read it. I went to like a presentation and they gave it to me. Kunig Udipis and Der Gute Mensch von Sejuan are two small German books that I got. My alma mater used to do like a big book sale at the end of every semester and it was like, a bag of books for a dollar, and I think that's where I got those. I read Oedipus Rex in high school, and I really liked it. I don't know if I'm going to actually go through the effort of reading it again in German, but I like having it. And then I also read some Brecht while I was in college, so that's why I picked that up, because I think that was the semester I read the Brecht, and I was like, ooh, this is academic and fancy. Um, so that's kind of a, will I read it? Won't I read it? Who knows? Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern, five stars. I read that over the summer. I borrowed it from my library in ebook format and read it in like two days. I just sat down and couldn't stop. It was like I was on vacation with my boyfriend and I felt kind of bad because I just had my nose in my phone reading a book the whole time. So I had to have it. I loved it so much. Plus, it's a gorgeous cover. I want to know who Aaron Morgenstern's like cover artist is because all of her covers are beautiful. So, had to buy it. Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. I read this in high school, senior year. I absolutely loved it. I loved the absurdism of it. I, it was wonderful. This copy I actually got last year. I was working in a boarding school 
in the dorms and like at the end of the year there's a big like clean everything out of your rooms because people like the kids buy a lot of stuff that they can't then fit in suitcases to go back home or things like books they bought for class and so one of my students was getting rid of it and so I loved the book I loved her it was a cute little memento so I might reread that at some point but I'm not planning it anytime soon last stuff for books I've already read is the first two books of the Necroseam Chronicles by Ellie Rain. Willow Vashes was three stars and Orbs of Azure were four stars. Rest of the shelf are sequels to books either I've already read the first book in the series or I'm planning on reading. I'm not going to go through those. They're sequels. I can't really say anything about them. All right. So before we move on to the rest of my books, you might have noticed on my bookshelf I have a bunch of wrapped books. This is why I didn't do the TBR that I was planning on it, because I decided to do this instead. I got the idea, in part from Murphy Napier, to do this because I have a lot of books that I've had for a long time and haven't read. I got them either from, like, the college book sale or a library giving them away or, like, got them for nothing or next to it. So they end up sitting on my shelf for, like, years and never read because I'll buy new books and be more excited and read those. And so what I did is I wrapped them all up. They're in three different sections and I'll go through them. So on the black moat crate on top there is my standalones and then first novels for series. And the red plaid along the back there, those are the standalone novels. I have 15 books there in total, which means whenever I finish a book, I'll roll a d20 and read whatever it comes up as. If I re roll a 20, nat 20, I don't have 20 books there, I only have 15. If I roll a 20, I will go to my TBR on Goodreads, do randomly generate a number, and pick up whatever book comes up. I'll either try to get it from the library or put it on a list to buy the next time I'm in the store buying stuff on Amazon. The 16 to 19 is just rolled again. 7 through 15 are books that I've gotten, I've had for a while, I want to read, I'm not as excited about, and then 1 through 6 are books that I'm really excited about. The reason I did that is so if that I'm getting into a reading slump, I can just roll a d6 and just know I'm getting a book that I really am excited to read. So those ones I'm actually going to go a little bit into detail about what the book's about. Um, the rest of them I'll just kind of be as short as I can about it. So first one. Kill the Farm Boy by Delilah S. Dawson and Kevin Hearn. This one I actually just got over winter break. I um, was in a bookstore with my boyfriend. It was a mistake. I don't know why he lets me go into bookstores. Anyway, I uh, saw they had this really cool like sign book section. And they had a book there called No Country for Old Gnomes. And of course, a name like that, you can't help but pick it up. And it sounded amazing. I don't remember what it was about, but it sounded hilarious. The phrase goth cardigan was used in the synopsis, so like, had to get it. So I go back to the books to try to find it, because the signed copy was like way more than I wanted to spend for a book I don't even know if I'm gonna like. Um, and they didn't have it, but they had this book by the same people, and this one is all about like a chosen one thing, but I don't really know much about it, because I literally just picked it up because I liked a different book by the same people. The Westy game, Westing Game by Ellen Raskin. So this is a book I read in middle school, elementary school. I think I read it in second grade. And this edition is old. It's um, actually only sold for school sets and stuff. So this was, we read it in like second, I think it was second grade. I'm pretty sure it was second grade. And the school got like a whole new set of the books with like updated covers and everything. So each of the students in the class just got a copy which is great. And I remember really, really loving this. And I know I read it again in middle school and still loved it. Um, it's kind of a mystery. And plus, what kind of cool tagline is when there's a will, there's a way, and he's left quite a will. Um, the concept here is that a bunch of people, seemingly random people, have all been invited to this hotel, really fancy schmancy hotel or apartment complex, one or the other, to stay. And when they get there, they find out that this man has died and that one of them will inherit his fortune. And there's a game they have to play to figure out who ends up getting it. 
I'm kind of excited. I was at home over winter break and I was like looking through my books and I saw it and I was like, I kind of want to reread that. There were a bunch of other books that I also wanted to reread, but, but I limited myself. So this is the one that like, it should be an easy read when I get to it. All right. The Descent of Monsters by J.Y. Yang. This is technically not a standalone, but I'm putting it here because the Tensorate series doesn't really have to be read the same way other series are. So I originally was going to put all of my sequels in here. And the reason I didn't is because I'm very much a binge reader when it comes to book series. Like, most series I have DNF'd has be have been because, like, I caught up with what was published. And when I went back to reread it, I was just uninterested. So this one, though, kind of isn't the same. Because I read the first one in June, and then I didn't read the second one again until December, and I felt fine waiting because the books are different perspectives and there's a time jump. So the first one I'll talk about a little bit because I don't want to talk about the third one, obviously. Um, the first one I read actually because Tor does a free ebook a month thing, and for June, for Pride Month, they did a four queer novellas as their ebook and I liked really really liked three out of the four of them uh and the one one of them I really really liked was the black tides of heaven I think is the first one of the tense it it was just amazing I don't want to say too much because they're novellas so I don't I even think saying anything but the idea is it's this fantasy realm and there's like the government and the church are kind of balancing each other and the concept is that there was the church helped the government with something, the queen, not, it's not what she's called, but with something. And in ex exchange, the ruler of the nation promised their child would go to the monastery, basically. Um, this deal was actually struck because one of her existing children want to go to the monastery. So it was kind of like uh, the abbot was like plotting with this child to make this happen. But the ruler, instead of doing what would be expected, intentionally got pregnant to send a different child to the uh, monastery, except she had twins, so they both go. But one of the things I loved about this book, and that like really like hit me about it, was that this world that JYN created, everyone is born gender neutral, and it's only when like the individual decides what gender they want that they're then assigned those pronouns and like they start taking pills to start making their body conform i think they used to have a surgery too i don't remember conform to that gender the way they want it to and it was just so like amazing so that's why i liked it too plus i really loved the dynamic between the characters so the second one I've already probably ranted about this a little too long, but the second one, I misunderstood what it was about because I had heard it was from the other twins' perspective, and I'm assuming it's the same events, but from the other twins' perspectives, which sounded amazing to me. Like, I'm normally not a fan of that, like, tell the same story from a different POV kind of thing, but for this one, I was, like, so into it. Um, but that's not what the Red Threads of Fortune is about. And I loved it even more. So book one was a four star, book two was a five star. I mean, the beginning, like, I think I Snapchatted out to, like, my brother and some friends about, like, the first 40 pages were all about this character's grief. And it just had my stomach in knots. I, it was amazing. So I'm really excited to get to The Descent of Monsters, which is from the perspective of the ruler. Um, but I don't know much about that because I try not to read the backs of those books because I felt like reading the back gave me a little too much about the second one. But it's so good. Just so good. I'm so excited. So that's kind of hoping I get that soon. That's what inspired me to start this was because I picked up book two even though I shouldn't have kind of thing. Couldn't stay away. So that may or may not be a large part of my motivation for wrapping all of my books because I would be on book three now. Uh, Animal Dreams by Barbara Kingslover. I don't know exactly what this is about. This is 
my little brother actually got this from a secret Santa for Christmas. And I knew of the author because one of the English teachers here teaches, uh, uses the bean trees in her class. And she told me about it and it sounded horrible and depressing. And I'm, but I'm trying to expand my horizons beyond fantasy. And so when my little brother got this, it felt like, ah, it's a sign. But I think it actually might be kind of fantasy. I'm not sure. The description on the back was a little confusing to me, but sounded interesting. So that's why I got it. All right. Warrior of the Altai by Robert Jordan. This is, I'm conflicted about this, but I'm trying to stay away from Wheel of Time type stock, so I'm not going to get too into it. This was published by Robert Jordan's estate after his death. I have feelings, but my brother bought this. He pre-ordered it, so I figured I'll give it a shot. Um, it's a barbarian-type fantasy, from what I understand. It's very classic fantasy, I've heard. We'll see. That's one I probably will try to do a more dedicated review about, or maybe Ben and I will have it, like a discussion about it, because he's already read it. And then the last one in this group of six is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. Uh, this was something I had planned to read last October, but uh, Pet Cemetery took me way too long to read. Um, but to be honest, I was kind of like not that excited about it. I knew the story. My brother Ben actually did um, when he was in college, did a cool like community theater or not community, but like a college theater production of Frankenstein that was this really cool like radio play version. It was amazing. Um, but over winter break, I watched the movie Mary Shelley, and it made me excited to read Frankenstein because it just, knowing Mary Shelley's story and also knowing the kind of like perspective she was writing it from makes me really excited to read it. So those are my top six. The rest of the books in no particular order. Uh, Send Linux Ascends by Josiah Bancroft. I know this is the first book in a series. I'm not counting it as the first book in a series because I got it as an arc from Jordan Con last year. I have no idea what it's about, but it was free. Uh, Beauty and the Werewolf by Mercedes Lackey. I love fairy tale retellings. I like Mercedes Lackey from what I've read of her, which is not a lot, so it seemed like a good thing to pick up. Flowers for Algeron by Daniel Keyes. This is another book. It was free, and I've heard it's changed people's lives. So, Holes by Louis Sicar. Saker? Louis Saker? I don't know. Um, I like the movie, and it was free or next to it kind of situation, and I realized when I was adding this to Goodreads that it says it's part of a series, so I'm not sure. The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, this was free, and also I read it in high school and adored it. I have, I come from a military background, my dad was in the army, so reading stuff like this is a lot for me sometimes. And so I really want to reread it at some point. So uh, how to talk to your cat about gun safety. This is a book that was one of the other, one of the students last year was getting rid of it. And I saw it and I grabbed it and I cackled. And so I want to actually read it. It's humor. I don't know if I'll actually even finish it because maybe, but it's hilarious. The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. It's a classic. I haven't read it, so seem like a good time. Legacy of Secrets by Elizabeth Adler. This is a book I've had in my shelves, on my shelves for a few years now. I don't even know what it's about anymore. It might be part of a series. I don't know. We'll find out. And The Freedom Writer's Diary. I read this one in high school as well. Uh, it's actually part of my inspiration for wanting to become a teacher, as cheesy and cliche as that probably is. Um, but, uh, Funnily enough, my uncle, when I graduated from college, got me a copy for gra as a graduation present. And so I figured I should give it a second read at some point. So then those striped red books that are sitting in front are first books in series. So when I finish one series, I'll pick one up at random to start. There's four. I don't have them labeled, but I'll read, roll a d4 and just count down from the bottom. So these ones are, and I'm not going to talk about them for long, The Alloy of Law by Brandon Sanderson. It's Mistborn Era 2. Of these, this is the only one I've actually already read. I um, got it before I was super involved in, like, Cosmere or anything. I just read some Sanderson because he was finishing Wheel of Time. 
So I picked this up not really understanding what it was when I picked it up. And I liked it alright, but at the time I didn't have the other books. So I didn't finish it. Or I finished it, but I didn't read any more because of that whole, if I don't binge it thing. So now I have the three that are published. Apparently there's going to be a fourth, so we'll see how that works out. But that's there. Six of Crows by Lee Bardugo, Black Prison by Brent Weeks, and A Darker Shade of Magic by Fee Schwab. And then on the top of the crates, I have some knickknacks and my anthologies. So Jordan Khan 2019 published an anthology that was like, <laughs> sorry, you can hear the snow plows outside plowing. Anyway, uh, they published an anthology called You Want Stories. And it was like guests or former like attendees or people involved in the con. And I not a huge short story person. I don't read a lot of short stories, but I figured I'd give it a shot, and because it was like an exclusive thing, it would be a nice memento of Jordan Con. but I actually really liked some of the stories in it, so I kind of figured, hey, why don't I try out more anthologies? So those are anthologies. I'm not going to go through all of them with you because it's kind of hard to talk about what an anthology is. I do have one up there that I bought over winter break that I'm so so excited about, uh, but it's gonna have to stay there unless I roll a five. So up there is also my Jordan Con 2019 badge and ribbons, and then there's also a little box up there. It's got my jewelry in it. I don't really wear a lot of jewelry. I wear a necklace from my boyfriend and this ring and a hair tie, um, but on special occasions I sometimes will wear jewelry, so that's there. And then all of my dice. Um, I have a lot of dice. I think I have 12 sets of dice total and then some extra d20s and a lot of d6s. Maybe maybe I'll just do a dice tour for you someday if I don't have anything else to do. But they're kind of separated into three sets. The leather bag there is a new set I just got from one of my DMs which is super amazing. Thanks D if you're watching. The yellow bag, my mom made that for me. She made us all dice bags the one year when we were into D&D &D at my house. Um, that holds most of my dice. It holds everything but my D6s and D20s, which are in the little fox bag. So I will grab one of those and roll it. Just a random D6. Maybe you'll eventually see all of my dice just from that and roll it to see what anthology I'll be doing. So my first roll was a six, which is a re-roll, and a four. So that is Welcome to Bordertown. It's, I bought it because it was urban fantasy and I wanted to, it was like early in college, I wanted to branch into urban fantasy, give it a shot. And I only realized when I was wrapping presents that it's an anthology. And I'm only realizing now some of the names in here, like Neil Gaiman, Cassandra Clare. Pretty exciting. So. It's uh, an anthology of Borderland, of like what I think is all urban fantasy stories. So that'll be good. I like anthologies. What I found I last over the past year, I like anthologies for my classroom um, to take with me like to work because I can just like read a story and stop. And it's not like that urge to keep going. So it's kind of nice for in the class like, between classes if I want to pick up a book or like they're doing a test and I don't have stuff to do somehow. It's very rare that I don't have like grading at the very least to do, but it's a nice break. So that'll be going to my classroom for me to read. In addition to that, there's a few things I'm currently reading. If you go on my Goodreads right now, it says I'm reading five things, I think. So let me explain a few of those right now. So well of Ascension, is that the second Mistborn? I'm not really reading right now. Uh, I read book one of Mistborn, an audiobook that I got from my library, and I was planning on doing the rest of them in audiobook, but they didn't have book two. They only had book two in ebook, so I kind of just didn't finish it. So it's on there, it's kind of, I guess, technically a DNF, but I'm just gonna leave it there, I'll finish it eventually. Fires of Heaven, from Wheel of Time. I'm reading that to my boyfriend. 
So I update it when we read, which is very infrequently because we're kind of long distance right now. Hopefully that'll get moving next year, but that's on there. That's a little slow. Oh, The Golden Compass, which I started in audiobook when I drove home for winter break, but you only get to keep it for a week from the library and probably because of the HBO series, there is a huge waiting list for it. So it got returned and I only got about halfway through it. So that I will start again whenever I get it, which is, I think, in like another six weeks. And the other two on there, I'm more actively reading. So Die Suche nach dem Augen der Welt is The Eye of the World in German. There is a book series called Die Zwerge, which is a German fantasy series focused on dwarfs. And for anybody that doesn't know me, which is most of you, I love dwarfs. Love them. I love dwarfs. So I saw this, like, I saw it originally in English, like the translation, and I was like, the dwarfs? That sounds amazing. And then I found that it was originally published in German. So now I really, really want to read it in the original German. But I don't know if I'm ready for that. I studied German for four years of high school and three years of college. I'm a little rusty. A lot rusty. So I decided I'd start reading Wheel of Time in German as a way of maybe getting some practice. And it's going slowly. I have been reading that for seven months and I am on like chapter five. So at this rate, I think I'll finish the series when I'm 60. But I'm trying to read that more actively. And then the other one is Starless Sea by Aaron Morgenstern. After I finished Night Circus, I wanted to read everything by Aaron Morgenstern, and it turns out I already had. So I got excited for Starless Sea. It's the first and only time outside of like sequels that I've gotten this excited for a forthcoming book. And I actually bought it when I was looking for Night Circus. I saw it and bought it but I didn't have time to get to it last year. So that was, I cheated my little wrap books roll system because I figured that was gonna be my first of the year, which if you check out the Instagram for the podcast, it wasn't, but yeah. Um, and so far it's interesting. I'm not liking it as much as Night Circus. I just don't think I like fantasy in modern settings as much. I'm trying but I don't think I do. But man, is it ex interesting. Um, also, I feel like it's calling me out every time it goes to like the current timeline perspective. Zachary, is that the protagonist's name? I just, I feel very called out. Anyway, the only thing, that's all I'm currently reading. I will probably start Pearl of Emerald soon, which is the next book in the Necrosine Chronicles, but I'm taking a little bit of a break from there just because, to be honest, I'm not used to YA. I haven't read YA since high school, and it's not like a, I think it's bad or anything. It's just like, I haven't read it. Um, so I'm actually struggling a little bit. I've been struggling with that series to get used to it. Some of the like tropes of the YA genre are rough for me. But I really like, I love the characters. Oh my god, I love some of the characters. And I love some of the relationships in that series, but some of them are a little bit more like, feels like we're pairing everybody up just because we can kind of thing. So that'll probably start soon. And of course, I'll read Welcome to Border Town soon. Start that. Just a little note for me. Uh, I know booktubers have this reputation for reading ferociously. I used to think I was a fast reader and a big reader. No. Uh, it turns out I'm a very slow reader. I just had a lot of free time in high school and middle school. I no longer have free time. So I read when I can, but don't expect a lot from me. I know like YouTubers read like 100, 150, 200 books a year. My goal is 30. <laughs> and that feels ambitious. <laughs> so we'll see. And that's all I have for you today. I will see you the next time the wheel turns.